All right, this is uh, section 2.121, 2. the um, PowerPoint voiceover. All right, so let's start this. Increasing, decreasing, and piecewise functions, applications, and applications. Graphs, functions, objectives, graphing functions, looking for intervals in which the function is increasing, decreasing, Estimate a relative maximum and a minimum, and then graph piecewise functions. Your calculator will do the piecewise functions for you. It does a nice job. I've got a uh, couple of good videos, and even in the homework, when I do the homework sheet, I'll actually be um, doing the piecewise functions on the calculator so you can see exactly how it's done. On a given interval, if the graph of a function rises from left to right, it's increasing. On the interval, if the graph drops from left to right, it's said to be decreasing. If the function values stay the same, it's constant. Check out this uh, Khan Academy. I'm not going to show it out of the uh, PowerPoint, but check this out. It does a nice job of talking about increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. There's a link to it there. A function is said to be increasing on an if open interval uh, if for all A and B. If uh, A is smaller than B, then the F of A, the Y value, is smaller than F of B. All right, this is increasing from left to right. It's going up. There's your F of A. There's your F of B. F of B is bigger than F of A. It's a larger number. Let's say this is 8. F of A would be something like 6 or 5. Increasing from left to right, the graph is going uphill, so to speak. Decreasing is just the opposite. All right. The graph is going downhill. F of B is going to be a smaller number than F of A. This value is a smaller value than that value. Decreasing, going downhill. And constant means it's just a horizontal line. It's not going uphill or downhill. It's just a straight horizontal line, a constant function. F, um, for instance, F of X equals 8 or F of X equals 3. F of X equals negative 9. Constant function. It doesn't go uphill or downhill. It's a horizontal line. Increasing, decreasing, and that's what constant looks like. Pretty straightforward. Determine whether a function is increasing or increasing or constant from its graph. Where is the function increasing? Well, from negative 4 to 0. All right, from negative 4 to 0, the function is going uphill. All right, increasing from negative 4 to 0, but not including negative 4, because that negative 4, it's not doing anything. It's just constant. At 0, it's not doing anything. But between those ranges, between those values, it is going, as you can see, in red, it's going uphill. All right, it's increasing. All right, another way of expressing that interval notation between negative 4 and 0. Notice it's not brackets because at negative 4 and at 0, the function isn't doing anything. It's just there. It's just constant. All right, so it's parentheses and not brackets. Where is it decreasing between negative 6 and negative 4, but not including negative 6 and negative 4? And that's how it would look like interval notation. That negative 6 is needed. It's just constant. And at 4 is just there. It's not doing it. It's stopped, so to speak. It's stopped decreasing. And it's also decreasing from 3 to uh, positive 6. Between 3 and 6, the function is going downhill. And you can see it in red here. And in interval notation, that would be expressed as... Open parenthesis, 3, comma, 6, close parenthesis. And finally, where is it constant between 0 and 3? We're not including the 0 and not including the 3. It's not, it's uh, just constant. It's constant there. We don't include the endpoint, so to speak. All right, there's a rehash of increasing and decreasing in a constant function. All right, please check out these two videos. I'm not going to show them out of the PowerPoint. But they have hot links there. If you click on them, take the time to watch those, please. A maximum value, a local maximum. Where does a graph reach a high point? All right. A high point right here. Maximum. Minimum, a local minimum. Where does a graph have a low point? Right there at uh, F of C is a low point. Find local max and local min from the graph of a function in terms of the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. At what numbers, if any, does it, this function have a local maximum? Local max would be right here, which is a high point. Now, notice it goes off to, into infinity and off into infinity there, but 
that is not a local. That's what's called an absolute max. An absolute max would be infinity. Local means in this little area here, in this little area here, where is the high point? Right there. All right, at one dot uh, comma two. It happens at one, all right? The graph reaches a local maximum at x equal one, and the value of that maximum is two. So it reaches a maximum at the x value, and the value of the maximum is the y value, two. It happens at one, and the value at one is two. Where does it have a local minimum? Well, there's going to be a couple. There's going to be one here and one there. It happens when x is equal to negative 1. All right. And the value of that maximum, that local, I'm sorry, minimum is 3. All right. At negative 1, it's a low point. And it also happens, excuse me, at, uh, at 3. What is the value at negative 1? Well, at negative 1, um, it has a value of 1, and when x is 3, the other local minimum, the x value there is 0. So negative 1, 1, and 3, 0. Where is the function increasing? Well, it's increasing from negative 1 to positive 1 in this area right here. It's also increasing from 3, and it stops increasing at infinity. It goes all the way up until... It can't go any further, all right? So from negative 1 to 1, this area right here, and from 3 all the way out to infinity. Notice parenthesis. Infinity is always associated with a parenthesis. Where is it decreasing? Well, it's decreasing. It starts decreasing way out here at negative infinity. It stops decreasing at negative 1. It's going to start decreasing at x equals positive 1. It's going to stop decreasing when x is equal to 3. All right, so from negative infinity all the way to 1, decreasing, and from x equal 1 to x equal 3, it's also decreasing. It's denoted in purple. All right, there's a relative minimum. There's a relative max. Now, granted, this graph is going off into infinity, but those wouldn't be um, uh, relative. They would be maximum. They would be, um, actually, these guys are local. I should take that back. These guys are local. All right, local minimums. And here's some examples you can just look at. Um, I would do these if we were in class. And here are the answers to those. All right, and same idea here. You got a maximum here at 2.5, a minimum at 1, a max at negative 0.667, a minimum at x equals 2. You got a minimum here of x equals 0.103. A relative max here at x equal 3.6. And in the previous slide, uh, increasing from x equal negative 5 to x equals 1. Constant between 1 and 3. Decreasing from x equal 3 to x equals 5. You get the idea. All right. Whereas uh, number 2, decreasing from x equal negative 5 to x equals 1. It increases from x equal 1 to x equal 3, not including those endpoints, and it's constant between x equal 3 and x equal 5. And you'll see the answers right here. Right. And a couple of more that I give you, you can try, but these here again would be part if I was doing this in class. But you've got the homework PDF, so you can look at these, but I'm not going to require that you do them. Now, this idea of a greatest integer function, there'll be one uh, on the exam. Here again, I've got a great video from Khan Academy where I show you how to graph this on your calculator. In fact, there's a nice video here that you can watch. The um, greatest integer function is often to refer to as the step function, all right, because it looks like, you know, steps are stairway, steps. And all it means is the greatest integer pairs the input with the greatest integer, which is less than or equal to that input. Greatest integer for negative 4 is negative 4. All right. This is the biggest number that's less than or equal to. All right. Greatest integer for negative 3.6 is negative 4. Greatest integer for negative 3 and a quarter is negative 4. You can look at this, but the... the um, the videos will actually go ahead and show you how to graph this. It's called the step function. Now, the only thing that you're going to see with, this, with the calculator 
The calculator can't give you open circles. It'll give you a line between these two points, but it won't give you the open circle. But you'll be able to, once you graph this, you'll be able to look at your calculator, look at the four possible solutions, and it'll be obvious which one it is. All right, several videos on how to graph this. In real life, step functions are widely used in business utilities such as gas, electric, and water. All right, if you, your gas, here it is, this is, this is U.S. Postal Service. If the package is one ounce, but not over that, you're, price, you're priced at $1.22 to send a mail out. If the weight of the package is two ounces, not over two ounces, one thirty nine. What this looks like is a, a step function. So it's used in, it's used in um, everyday life, especially in business. All right, this is a case where the post office utilizes a step function to price out the, the amount of money they're going to charge you to. To send a first-class postage uh, package. The one that's kind of tricky is this piecewise function. Here again, I've got many videos, and I can even address this during our Zoom meetings. I've got two videos here, and I've got a great one that's part of the, uh, in Canvas, step four, I'm sorry, piecewise functions. All right, he's talking to us about, you know, this is the value of the function if x is less than 3. And you use this function if you have an input of x that's greater than 3 piecewise. This is the first piece. This is the second piece. Here again, you wouldn't have to use a table of values. The videos will show you how your calculator will graph these piecewise functions given its specific requirements. Here's another one here where uh, the function is equal to 3. When x is 2, it equals this uh, quotient if x is not equal to 2, all right? Now, here again, when you do this on your calculator, the calculator doesn't have the option of showing you this dot. Neither does it have the option of showing you an open circle. It will be fairly obvious when you do it on a calculator. All right. Uh, find f of negative 5. Well, it's a piecewise function. You use x plus 1 if x is less than or equal to 2. You use this as x is between negative 2 and 3. And you use this function if your x value is bigger than 3. Well, negative 5. Negative 5 is less than negative 2. All right, so we're using this very first function, which says take your x value, add 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. All right, uh, find f of negative 3. Well, here again, f of negative 3 is... Negative 3 is less than negative 2. I'm ut utilizing this, which means I'm, t I'm taking my negative 3 and I'm adding 1. I'm getting 2. Now, find f of 0. Well, 0 lies between negative 2 and 3. So, he says if your x value is between these two values, the value of your function is simply 5. That's just pretty straightforward. Right. And let's see if I go back. Um, let's see, f of 3. Well, f of 3, 3 would be between negative 2 less than or equal to 3. So my value of my function would be 5. f of 4, well, 4 it would fit into this inequality. 4 is bigger than 3, so I'd be using this function. I'd be taking 4 and I would square it. My value would be 16. f of 10, 10 is way bigger than 3, so I'm utilizing this function which means take that 10 value and place it in place of x. 10 squared would be 100. Um, find f of 0. Uh, let's see, f of 0 would be when x is 0, my y value is 1. When x is 2, my f of x would be 4. And uh, I guess that's it. The domain would be from... Let's see, negative 1 all the way out to infinity. It would start at negative 1, and this guy goes all the way up to infinity. Um, you wouldn't have to graph this by hand, all right? The range, um, the range here would be, this graph is, it, low point on the graph is at zero but not including zero and it would go all the way up to infinity that would be your range from zero to infinity not including either one of those values all right from negative one to infinity 
ranges from, as I said, zero to infinity, from zero all the way up to infinity. These are some of the examples. Um, here again, I'll, I'll, I'll do all of these when I do the, um, the homework voiceover. I'm not asking you to do them out of this, uh, out of this PowerPoint. All right.